Game of the Year coverage is brought to you by Lumosity. Hey guys, Tara here, and if it wasn't evident from the giant Christmas tree behind me, it is the holidays, which is the time of year where we take to really reflect on the games that were very important to us over the course of 2013. We're gonna have these Game of the Year videos from pretty much everybody on the Rev3 Games staff. So uh, these are my personal picks. I'm gonna run down my top five. They are not in any particular order, except for number one, which I will get to at the very end. So starting off this list, it's one of my favorite games of the year, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. I was actually at the Ubisoft event the day that they announced this, and the energy in the air, uh, particularly between Max Scoville and Dean Evans, the creative director of the game, was very exciting. It's cool to just see people who are super excited about making a game and aren't just you know, spouting off PR spiel. Um, everybody there was clearly super into the idea of this game and was just super happy to be making it. It was described to me that day as the Miami connection of video games, which is that really awful 80s B film where a gang of motorcycle ninjas faces off against a martial arts rock band in the Miami drug trade. It's super weird. You can imagine that sort of idea with Far Cry 3 mechanics is something that very much appeals to me and also has the best tutorial I've ever played in a game. So there is that. Running is like walking, only faster. Fuck. Next up on my list is Beyond Two Souls. This is not a game that I was expecting to fall in love with. Um, I'm not usually one for very far-fetched plots, which it kind of is, um, but when I was reflecting on it for Game of the Year stuff, and this didn't actually quite occur to me um, when I reviewed it, but as I was thinking about this game for Game of the Year, I realized that it probably has the most realistic representation of a human female in a video game. I mean, you have Jodi, who is not a superwoman. She's not an overly sexualized pair of boobs. She's not existing for the sole purpose of being rescued by a man. She just is. She's a normal human female. And obviously, that is not the only reason I like the game. There are many others. I addressed all of them in my review, which you can find on this channel. But it is one reason that I thought was interesting and perhaps worth mentioning. How you doing today, Jody? Good? <laughs> Next up on my list, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. I actually didn't get a chance to play this until very recently, and I am so glad that I did because everything about it is just phenomenal. The music is great, the story, the incredible art design. I tried describing this game to somebody over the weekend, and it ended up coming out as just Sort of imagine all of the most artistically relevant games from the past generation, things like Limbo and Journey and Eco, and combine them all together, and that is Brothers. So if you like things that are good, you will like this. It's three hours, it's 15 bucks, and it's worth every penny. Also, fun fact, some of the most terrifying platforming I've ever had to perform in a video game. So if that appeals to you, then you may want to check that one out. Speaking of platforming, next game on my list, Rayman Legends. Rayman seems to be one of the few franchises that I can count on to live up to my expectations, and Rayman Legends was no different. I had really high expectations for this game to begin with. Those only increased after that uh, famed 10-month delay that ended up uh, porting it to pretty much every console in existence. And it ended up being a really good thing because the final game was just packed with content. The music is awesome. The music levels are, in particular, I think some of the best that a Rayman game has ever had. So I think this is one of my, obviously, most fun games of the year, but it's also one of the best Rayman games in existence. All right, number one, my game of the year for 2013, Bioshock Infinite. I actually did not get a chance to really discuss this much on our channel. Adam reviewed the game for us, and he described it so perfectly in his review that I felt like anything I could really say about it would just not do it justice. But this is one of those games that I played, and at least half of the time I was playing it, I just had goosebumps. It's rare to see a game that so perfectly blends narrative and combat. And I mean, the combat is amazing. It's always been in Bioshock, but the skyhooks and everything just elevated it 
no pun intended. Um, and it's the type of game that I really just want to show everybody I know, even people who don't play video games, just to say this is how far we've come. And so yeah, it's not just game of the year for me for 2013, it's probably one of my favorite games from this generation, period. So. That is really exciting to me. A couple games that aren't in my top five but that I did want to mention, uh, Metro Last Light. I love post-apocalyptic shooters. This is easily one of my favorites of all time. Probably second only to Fallout 3. And what I loved about it is that it doesn't just focus on survival. It also manages to really bring in the emotional impact of a post-apocalyptic scenario and introduces all these ideas about society and politics and how things break down in situations like that. So very good. Also it's scary as shit, just putting that out there. It looks incredible and the plot is just weird enough to be interesting without being over the top. So I highly recommend that. The other game I wanted to mention quickly was Gone Home, which cannot be described. Uh, you really have to go into this game not knowing what to expect at all, which is how I did it. I'm not gonna say anything about the story because I don't wanna spoil it for you guys, um, but I will say that as gamers, there are certain habits that we form and assumptions we make without even realizing it, and Gone Home manages to challenge almost all of those in a matter of two hours. It's not for everybody, but if you are open-minded, I think this will be one of your top games of the year. So those are my top five, or seven, I guess, games of the year. Uh, these are the ones that spoke to me and games that I am going to remember long after the year is over. Obviously, there are tons of great games that I wasn't able to include in this list. That doesn't mean I don't like them. It just means that these were the ones that spoke to me. Like I said, we are gonna have lots of other Game of the Year videos and coverage up on this channel before the end of the year, uh, including Game of the Year videos from the whole rest of our team. So make sure you watch those, and of course, let us know in the comments what your Game of the Year is. If you like Red 3 games and you wanna support us, then why not check out Lumosity? Lumosity can help you improve your brain performance and live a better life, all through the power of games based on actual neuroscience. Build your own customized training program to enhance your memory and attention, and get detailed training summaries to keep track of your progress and see where you need to improve. Check out lumosity.com slash red3games to get instant access, and remember, every sign-up helps support the show.